you were the word at the beginning one with God the Lord most high you're hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us For Jesus you brought heaven My sin was great, your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Christ, my King What a wonderful name it is Nothing could
We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. In his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven, which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. We would not have you ignorant, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate, separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you love us with an everlasting love. 
and can turn the shadow of death into the light of a new dawn. Help us now to wait upon you with reverent and submissive hearts. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things that with patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life, which you have given us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please uh, sit. We shall now have a tribute in song by the Sherburn New Testament Church. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vicki, and this is Faith, and we are from the New Testament Church of God in Sherborne, and we just wanted to do a short tribute for our brother Hollingsworth, who we knew very well. Many times as a child, he would be at home in the house talking to Granny about his escapades, walking long distances, and having conversations and then he would always be neatly clad and we would enjoy just watching him and you know listening to these big words that he would be calling and if there are any articles in the newspaper he would recall the date and the time and the author he was such a knowledgeable person but at church he would always say to us one of these days I want to see y'all fully clad in robes as a choir you know you have to do this thing properly well we didn't get to that stage but he would clap he would sing he would rejoice in the lord and i'm sure that he is safe in the hands of his maker so we just want to remember him with this one Speak from our lips of clay for your 
the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all in one, Almighty God, our Savior and King. God bless you. Let us put our voices together and sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. What a privilege. sit as we now have the ministry of the word. First reading comes from Psalm 23. Good evening. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He lead me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our second reading comes from the New Testament, John's Gospel, chapter 14. 
reading verses 1 to 6. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So ends our lesson. Thanks be to God. Vicky would have indicated that Brother Hollingsworth worship with them sometimes at the Sherman, and they assign a tribute. But he also worship here sometimes, and our choir will now sing a tribute. Together we sing the hymn, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder 
Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe this day. And then I sing, my Savior, God to thee, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee, how great thou art. Let's stand, let's sing.
Amen. Please be seated. It is with a sense of sadness, yes, but joy to be here and to shout how great thou art. On behalf of the congregation here at Mount Tabor, the officers and members on my own behalf, to you relatives and friends of Brother Hollinsworth, our sincerest condolences to you and trust that you can find strength and comfort at this time in the outstretched arms of God. He's the one that says, blessed are those who mourn, or when you go to another translation, happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I trust that you can experience the comfort of God even now. The provision for soul and body. And I went to hear Paul, so I went to his writings to the church at Corinth. And he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 reads, We live by faith, not by sight. Then verse 8 is where I want to rest this afternoon. We are confident. I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. To be away from the body and uh, to be at home with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. If not some of us, all of us do not talk or think about death. We hear in Barbados try to get away from death. So when it is funeral time, they say no mourning colors. I was discussing this with a few of my colleagues in ministry and we worked out that if you decide to come to a funeral in a, an outfit that befitting party time, you do not really come to a funeral. We recognize that when persons are moving away from mourning colors, and for me, I do not really know what mourning colors are. Um, I love black. I love white. If those are morning colors, then so be it. And what are the colors? But I just cannot fathom the notion and no morning colors, please. Every one of us, if not all, do not talk about death. But we need some time to think about that, to 
think about our own debt. And so when we gather together like this at a Thanksgiving service, paying tribute to our loved one and our friend, we need to stop and think about death. For the word death carries with it the ideas of mystery, a lonely separation, a final going or no returning. So this statement by Paul to the church at Corinth of being absent from the body and being present with the Lord is one of the, the finest, one of the finest statements in the New Testament and can help us and can help clear up our thinking about death. Yeah, we have to go sometime. And so we finish with it. And that's the end of our discussion. We have to go sometime, so, and that's it. But I want us to think a little more. Think about your own death. I wondered what I would be doing if I am at death's door, so to speak, and I would be lying there um, thinking, or if there is a case of an accident or so, what would happen? What would happen? One day I visited the hospital and um, I don't normally go. It has to be a case of emergency, emergency to get me to the hospital because of my own thinking and my own personal um, tragedy or motive or whatever with hospital notions. And while I was going up the steps, a nurse stopped me, Reverend, come quick, come quick. I want you to go into that room because that lady is crying, but she is dying. And I go like, well, what can I do? So she says, see if you can calm her down. She's not lying down. She's standing up and she's yelling loudly. I walked into the room, never, never saw the lady before. Arrived at my own conclusion, even before I opened my mouth, that she was afraid to die. And so, instead of going to see the patient, a member from Mount Tabor at the hospital, I gone in a room where a woman was dying but was afraid to die. Needless to say, I was able to calm her down simply because she knew the 23rd Psalm and I started saying it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I said it and said it and said it. Then she joined me in repeating it until she was calm and she went back in her bed. I stayed there until she died.
A couple of days later, I was in my bed. Because when I go to the hospital, I get sick afterwards. But many of us don't think about death. Many of us are afraid. Many of us, if not all of us, do not talk about death. So this afternoon I'm here to get us all to think about it and uh, to think. This is the finest statement in the New Testament. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What absent from the body means? When a Christian when a believer leaves his body, it brings about a condition called death. But it is death from the body, never for the soul. Death for the body, never for the soul. Death does not destroy the inhabitant of the body. It just takes down the house. I was told that here in Barbados, you can move a chattel house from one place to another. You just take it down side by side and front and back, put it on a trailer, and move it someplace else, and within a day you put it back up. That is similar. You are moving away from this house. The dwelling place in which you live. God puts soul and body together in the first place eventually he will put it again put it back together again just as a carpenter will take it down and then put back up of the house God can do that again eventually God will do it again and the Christian will then be the whole individual God desires and design in the beginning to be absent from the body. Present with the Lord. When Christians are absent from their bodies, they are with the Lord. The process called death has separated soul and body. And though the body remains with us, like our brother Hollingsworth, the body remains with us. And in a few minutes, we are going to take it and lay gently over the graveyard. The soul returns immediately to the Lord. What a happy thought. Death is a release to the soul. It is removal from a tired, worn, wrinkled body to be really free of all that which has been of the flesh and to be present with the Lord promises far more than descriptions allowed. Our brother with his use of words, and Vicky, I had that experience. I was stand up outside on the steps, and sometimes I will sit down, and I'm supposed to be the younger of the two. 
but he with himself would be standing and would give, give me some words. I learned some, I've used some as well. But it is such an honor to have known him. I wish he was here. He would give me some descriptions about what I'm seeing today. I'm saying that, and to be present with the Lord promises far more than description allowed. But he would use some words to give us some descriptions. And this is the hope of a, the Christian. How does one make certain of such a hope? Jesus said in the passage read from John's Gospel, I am of the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. The greatest experience possible for a person is to become one with God. And Jesus said, I and my Father are one. We can be, if only we recognize and we can say with the psalmist, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. He has promised to be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us, says scriptures. So to become one with Jesus is you personally invited to be. You are invited personally to make Jesus your friend because he, as your friend, sticks closer than a brother. To become one with Jesus is to personally invite him into your life. He will forgive you of your sins and he will save your soul. When this happens, you a child of God. And at separation of soul and body, you are already one with God. Simply continues with Him in another place. I guess that's why I've chosen the hymn how great thou art. Because only a great God can do such. The body is tenderly placed in the ground when we leave this place to await the moment when God will again unite soul and body. Hence Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We do not know what kind of person Brother Holland's word will be. We do not know what kind of person we will be. But one thing for certain, soul and body will come back together 
because of the greatness of the God we serve. We do not know, but we will be like Jesus, for we will see him as he is. We do not sorrow as people who have no hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Many of us would have faltered and fallen short. All of us, neither let it be afraid. In my father's house are many rooms. I have gone to prepare one for you. Are you going to allow his work, preparing it for you, go in vain? Or you are going to make it possible to be in the sweet by and by. May God help us. May God help us to do so we can walk away and declare it, it is well with my soul. May God help us to do just that. Knowing to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. God, we thank you for this. Another opportunity for us to make it well with our souls. So are we bow in your presence asking you to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to make it whole in the blood of the Lamb. We know, God, uh, that you have paid the ransom. We know that you have paid it all. And so, God, we open ourselves for you to make it well with our souls. So we can declare with Paul to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. The hymn, When peace like a river attendeth my way, it is well, it is well with my soul. Please stand and sing.
Amen. You may be seated. I represent the Bethlehem Moravian Church where Brother Lionel Hollingsworth, brother of the deceased, as well as other family members, are members of the Bethlehem congregation. And so on behalf of the pastoral team there and Reverend David Ains, associate pastor, is in the congregation. The officers and members of the Bethlehem congregation, I extend to Brother Lionel and other family members our condolences on the passing of his loved one. And I pray that indeed he may experience that beneath you are the everlasting arms of God in times like these. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. By your human birth, by your obedience and faithfulness, by your prayers and tears, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, by your triumphant resurrection, by your abiding presence. Yes. Let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you, we thank you for the multitude no one can number, whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they dwell with you beyond evil and sorrow forever. We thank you also for all to whom amid the trials of this mortal life, you give the faith that overcomes the world, who have peace in you and rejoice in hope of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Eternal God, before whose face the generations rise and pass away. We bless and praise your name for all who have departed this life in faith, and especially for Henderson, Athelie Hollisworth, for all your kindness to him throughout his earthly life, we give you thanks. We thank you that for him all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that death itself is past. Almighty God, may we, inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, by whom we are led through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity, be near us to comfort and uphold. Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight and that they live evermore with you. As we thank you for Henderson, whose life we shared, may we trust you at this time of parting. O oh God, give us of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to others. 
following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we, in our turn, find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us all stand as we commend our brother to God's keeping. Let us commend Henderson, Athelie Hollingsworth, to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave us life, and in your love you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Henderson Athelie Hollingsworth to your merciful keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again, that we might enjoy eternal life. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Our recessional hymn, When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And the question remains, will you be there? We sing our recessional hymn after which our service continues in God's Acre, otherwise known as the cemetery. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more.
Are you on now? You see any? Jesus said, set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. We know that when our earthly frame is destroyed, we possess a building provided by God, eternal and in heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, and has faith in me shall ever die. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. For as much we have entrusted Henderson to God's merciful keeping. And now we commit his body to the ground in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of all, we pray to you for those whom we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace, that light perpetual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Almighty God, God of all mercies and give of all comfort, deal graciously with all who mourn, that cast in every care upon you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Lord, support us all the day long of this earthly life, our work done. Then, O oh Lord, in your mercy, grant us and those we love safe lodging, holy rest and peace at the last. We thank you for all your servants who have departed in the faith. The great cloud of witnesses by whom we are encompassed was dear to our own hearts. Give us grace with them to follow you, and bring us at last to those things which eye has not seen nor ear heard, which you have prepared for them that love you. Together. The grace, the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, love the love of God, God and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Shall we gather at the river? They have been muted. They said they have been muted. If it's crystal tight forever, flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, it's at the river that flows by the throne of God. On 
silver spray. We will walk and worship ever all the happy golden days. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Yes, we will stand at the river that flows from the throne of God. Will we reach the shining river? Will we every burden down? Raise our spirits to deliver and provide our own home ground. Yes, beautiful, beautiful river. Yes, we the saints of the river that flows by the throne of God. As the shining of the river mirror of the Savior's face, saints whose dust will never sever with their songs of saving grace. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river, that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the silver river, soon our pilgrimage will see of me. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the sand. To God be the glory, great things he had done.
stay not mine, O Lord, however dark it be. Lead me by thine own hand. Choose out the path for me. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. Shout the victory, onward to. 